Now then, you all right? Lisa and I are heading over to Helmsley to meet a chap called Craig. Uh, Craig has been a virtual friend of mine for the uh, best part of a year and a half now. Craig owns and runs a outdoor school called Rugged Outdoors and today he's going to be teaching us some bushcraft and uh, you'll be pleased to know that we are still in Land of the Gods. This is Craig, um, and here we are at the recently opened mm -hmm. um, Rugged Outdoors, or the Rugged Woods. Rugged Woods, Rugged yeah. Woods. Um, we've eaten. Woohoo! <laughs> um, there will be photographs of that. Now, you're about to show us this pouch. He's very kindly given me this, which I've got to make a toggle for. But you're going to say what's in yours now, aren't you? Yeah, basically, this actually isn't mine. This is Luke's. This is my eldest's. And, and he keeps anything that's going to burn, anything that he can use to help him get a fire going. Yeah, fl uh, flint. He's got a st in here somewhere there's a steel. He's got paracord because paracord lights as well. Does it? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, it's something, that, there's two things that, that we look at. There's primary and secondary source. This is a great secondary source because it'll keep burning for quite a long time. Well, okay. Yeah, so it works quite well. But then just shards of, of dry wood, wood yeah. yeah. Um, birch bark, has he still got it in here? Oh, he's used it. He, he was down here the other day put, uh, lighting some fires. So, but anything that's really that you can use as tinder, yeah, that's dry. So, would some of that lint go in there as well? Or oh, I'm surprised that the lint isn't in here because normally that's the thing. That's it. Oh, there you go. There's a small bit of lint. Now he'll get a fire going with that. Right. No problem whatsoever. You don't need masses of it. Um, but the thing you've got to remember, it, it does go up quite quickly. Is that the stuff that grows in your belly button? Yeah. But he hasn't got that from his belly button, thankfully. Where did he get that from? My belly button. <laughs> <laughs> he got that out of the, um, the, wash, the, the tumble dryer at home. Right. Fantastic source of, of, of uh, tinder, that. Um, it works really well high success rate particularly if you're doing it with kids so it's a good one to uh, a good one to use but yeah unfortunately i would have thought i thought i was going to be able to show you a lot more in here but like i say we were down at the weekend and he's used a lot of it so what do you call this then your fire kit this is just a tinder pouch tinder pouch yeah um normally he wouldn't he wouldn't keep his uh flint in there i can't find his steel he's been using this unless it's in there somewhere but uh, no it doesn't look like it but um, yeah, that's what that is. Simple one. He's got another one that does have roll, literally rolls of birch bark. It has um, um, a small ferro rod. Um, it's the, the old saying is two is one, one is none. Yeah, always have backups for everything yeah. that you've got within reason, because you don't want to have a lot of weight. Does that include girlfriends? Oh, absolutely. No, it isn't Tracy, honest. <laughs> So that, that really is a tinder pouch, and they're dead easy to make. Um, a great place to get bits of leather, if you go to um, furniture stores, oh, right, yeah. Yeah, they do you know, the offcuts the off where they yeah. show you the, the swatches of the different colours. Sometimes they say, right, well, they're out of stock now, and they still keep all of them going there, gather them, there's all sorts you can make from them. Good idea, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is a, this is a really nice one. Actually, Paul, I got this from Paul Dorr. And if you don't know Paul Dort, this guy is a wizard with leather. I mean, he is oh, just brilliant. Um, but inside here, <coughs> excuse me, there's a little tin, and inside that tin, oh, char cloth. Yep, char cloth. You don't need a lot. So there's the char cloth, the flint, ah. the steel. Ranger band. All right, yeah. Yep, so, so that's, that's a bit of inner tube. tube. Yeah, yeah. They're fantastic. Um, bit of fungus. I'll go into that later. I'm not going to say much about that now, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that later okay. on. And then the one thing that you'll think, why on earth has he got that in here? Uh, pencil sharp. That's to make shavings from twigs. Absolutely. 
can save your life that. Who would have thought that one of those can save your life? But seriously, it is a, a, a great thing to have. And it's small and compact. That's the great thing about it. It's small and compact. So, so what do you call that pouch? Has that got a name? This is um, just my fire steel, flint and steel pouch. Right, OK. No real, I don't call it anything other than that. But I, I just love it. it. It's nice. The leather's beautiful. He's done a really good job on it. It doesn't matter what he does. It is spot on. But I'll introduce you to him. To my yeah, brother. lovely. He's a great guy. Um, so that's two of the pouches. And there are other, other things, other different pouches that we can, we'll show you later on. Nice one. Thank you, mate. No it's only supposed to be a, a steak it's for, uh, you know, like a big version of a tent peg, but I made a Groot. <laughs> Can't take me anywhere. Dead Groot. That is punkwood. Is it off a particular tree or...? Nah, just about anything will work. So it's just been seasoned beyond belief? Yeah. It's where the rain's got on it and it's rotted down and it's rotted down and that's what it turns out like. But How did that get in here? This is quite a new forest. Well, you'd be surprised because you look at these trees here, those willows must be 60, 70 feet high. So it's, although I say it's a new one, it's new as in these pine trees, the spruce. They're new. Right. But those, they've been there for a long time. I mean, there's there's an elm tree out there that's got to be three, four hundred years old. Oh, right. Easily. So, <clears throat> this is new, but the rest isn't. So that's basically, that's punk wood. And what I want to show you to do um, is how to turn that into char wood. Okay. And it's great for taking a spark. So Craig says, have you got your saw on you? I said, no. So he had me running all the way back to camp over there, 16 miles away. Got me saw. He said, cut that off there. So I cut that off there. And you reckon that's fat wood, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely is. Look at it. And you don't have to dry that out? When it's, if, if you mature it a little bit, it is better. Right. But like that, it will go up. We'll, sh we'll show you on the fire as well. So what type of trees are they? Spruce. You've got a few of them here, haven't you? Oh, just one or two. And the, the thing is that the, 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 I, I was always taught that the best one to go for is one that's fallen. <laughs> Because generally what happens is the sap makes its way down and, and there's a lot of the time there's a lot in the in the roots here and, and you can get to a point where you've got literally punk wood like this and you break through, break through and all of a sudden you'll get this bit of fat wood and it'll be, you know, huge, like it can be as, as big as the tree right. of this size, depending on the size of the tree. But um, yeah, that's all it is. And it's fantastic stuff. <clears throat> Shave it down. Cut it into little bits. Feather it. Feather it. You yeah. name it, you can do it. I mean, we what we tend to do is you, we just literally just take the back back side of our knife, scrape a little bit of dust off, get it down, and, and to a get dust. It like yeah. A, yeah. Okay, so yeah. that catches the spark, and then you can add a little bit more of the sol more solid stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Anything to get the get the fire going. I mean, obviously, if you use a a, a, a bigger piece or you know get the dust off and get it going, and then put a, another bit of fat wood, it'll go pretty much straight away. Um, if you need it sustained, but generally it's just to get the fire going. Put your little twigs on, and away you go from there. Excellent. Excellent. Man. Right. So what we're going to do? We're going to take some shavings first. Just go nice and slowly, so you don't set them off. And then, so that'll make sure that you get your fire going. Nice it's just added extra. And then strike. Go from the top to the... That's it. There you go. We have created fire! Cool. And that's just the lint, isn't it? We've put that's nothing else the in there. Nothing in there at all. And see how slowly that burns. Because it's fairly compact, the lint. Yeah. Surprising, that, actually. I thought it, that'd be it? like cotton wool sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, cotton wool, 
um, uh, the stuff you get from bull rushes and stuff like that, that's what I call flash tinder. Most people call it flash tinder. And it just poof, it's gone, you've got to be really quick. But the lint is so much so much easier. To... Yeah. yeah. And it takes very, very easily as well. So could you have you ever put like Vaseline or anything into that or No. But here's one I prepared earlier. It's actually Tracy made this. See where the lint is there? Right. Yeah. But that's that's got wax. It's got um, birch shavings. Oh, it's nice. got fat wood in it. And basically, what I would, what you would do is put a bit of of uh, lint on it, get it going, and then that'll burn for ages, absolutely ages. So you've got sustained burn. You're not worried about having to go. Oh, get the wood on quickly. Gives you a chance to just get yourself ready to do what you need to do. So if you were trying to light slightly damp. Material that would give you a lot more of a fighting chance, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And that's homemade as well. Homemade, yeah. Nice one. They could also put maybe a, a scent, a scented candle in there. Absolutely, you can. Make but it... it's already scented because it's got the fat wood in. <laughs> <laughs> but would that help with the bugs and the midges and stuff like that? Oh, massively. Yeah. Big time. Oh, it has for us. I might have misunderstood and told you something which is not correct. When we're looking for uh, fat wood, what we need is a, a sort of an angled branch, and the fat wood is only ever going to be at this sort of point here. That's where it's collected. So there's only going to be perhaps about an inch or so there of fat wood. So this tree that this branch that we took off earlier, it's only going to be in this area. That's that's it. Um, the other uh, resting place for it is if let's say we came across this tree and it had fallen over we were going to look at where the the roots are and dig around in there because that is also another area where that fat wood is going to be so basically it's where all the sap and gravity is pulling the sap and that's where your fat wood is going to be found so if I misled you earlier on I'm sorry new at this came up with it, these one of the, and I thought what on earth is that and if you break into it, that's your sap. It's sap. Right, right. So uh, you know, I'm, again, it's the thing about bushcraft, isn't it? Oh, I suppose anything in life that you learn something new all the time. Yes, yes. Um, and I've never, I, I've got to say, I've never seen those little lumps. And I thought, I saw one the other day. I thought, what the hell is that? Push my knife into it, and lo and behold, there comes, there's the sap. So it's a great way of getting bits of... So this this sap now, if if we were to use that to light a fire, would that be much copper or does it have to actually drain into the wood and become soaked no, I, into it? I'd say that would pretty much go up straight away. Really? I would say so, yeah. So what about these, um, the actual, say, scab of it, the, the little lump that's over the top then, would that just be absolutely soaked with the sap? Yeah, I, I think <laughs> when you see pine trees explode... I don't think you've seen it with a fire. I've not fought in any wars. Right. Few at home, but well, we can start. We can we can change that. <laughs> <laughs> but when you see pine trees explode, again, I've been told that that's it, that it is actually the sap that's doing it. Right. Yeah. So we've stood think... this close to it then. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Where's the friction? <laughs> but if you think about it, if you've got loads of little um, nodules like this. I mean, can you smell it now? Yeah. Yeah. Shame you haven't got smelly vision. That's absolutely... Oh, that's beautiful. So, what I'm saying is it must be so easy for that to catch a light. And is this all year round, or just... I haven't a clue, Stephen. Right, okay. I've got it. I mean, I, I've seen, you know, we've collected sap in the winter. I've got a video on right. on YouTube with it where we've, got, we've collected it, me and the boys. Um, so I would say probably, yeah. Right, okay. But it's the first time I've ever come across these little nodules, and it's not this just this tree. There are other trees that I've seen it on as well. So again, something new. Excellent.